thank you for watching today's sermon from St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Stoddard. Our message today is... Please stand. In the name of Christ, who is the mediator of the new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom for, to set us free. Amen. Listen to a third lesson, our, our sermon text for this morning, which is from Isaiah chapter 25. We'll read verses 6 through 9. Isaiah writes to us, On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of our God. You may be seated. Dear eternal saints of God, sitting down to a meal that has been specially prepared for you is a real treat and something that we eagerly look forward to. Even in our fast-paced culture, where people are moving a mile a minute and, and often don't have time to sit down together to eat, or perhaps because of that fast-paced culture that keeps us moving so often that we don't regularly sit down for a special meal together. Those special meals are really important. 44% of Americans uh, say that they go out to eat at least once a week. So those meals that we have where someone has put care and consideration into what they've made for you rather than some cook behind a counter at the, at the restaurant, those meals are, are really special and really important. The effort that your host or hostess puts into that meal shows that they care about you. They're doing something because they love you. When was the last time that a special meal was made for you? Maybe you get a, a special meal on your birthday. Maybe you remember back when you were dating and your, your girlfriend or boyfriend uh, had you over for dinner and made you a special meal, pulled out all the stops, the, the best food that they know how to make or your favorite food perhaps that they know that you like. Maybe you had a, a bottle of wine there on the table and, and cloth napkins instead of the, the normal paper towels or, or, or communal dish rag that, that often gets used at the table. You know, those, those nice meals that we, we really look forward to. A special meal is something that brings us close together and expresses our love to each other. God paints this picture of him providing for us a beautiful, wonderful meal. But it's, it's not just in the New Testament that God gives us that picture. It's, it's even way back in the Old Testament that we see time and time again God inviting his people to come and enjoy a wonderful banquet with him. Exodus chapter 24, as the Israelites are there around Mount Sinai and Mount Sinai is burning and smoking with God's presence, God invited Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, the 70 leaders of Israel, to come up on the mountain and enjoy a beautiful banquet there with him where they sat before God's throne and there was something like a sea of sapphire beneath his feet and they ate and they drank with God in a very heavenly banquet together. The people of Israel, when they brought their tithes and their fellowship offerings to the tabernacle or to the temple where God's name was worshipped, part of the instructions along with those sacrifices is that they would actually take some of their offering and enjoy it together and eat it there together in the presence of the Lord as an expression of their fellowship, their unity with him. Through the prophet Isaiah today, God sends out his invitation to his great banquet, a meal prepared just for you. 
The Lord prepares a feast for sinners like us. He has prepared the finest blessings for us, and he has prepared us for the joy of his presence. Now, an invitation to a very special meal may often include a menu for what's going to be served at that dinner. And Isaiah tells us here at his banquet for us, God has prepared the best meats and the finest age wine. Rich food for everyone. It's interesting looking at the words that Isaiah uses to describe that food. Actually, there in the original language, it says that God is serving the, the fattiest meats, the, the, the ones with the marrow and the, and the juices still in them. Now, for us 21st century Christians, we, we've been taught that all those fat and the cholesterol and everything, that's, that's not good for you. So we might look for the tenderest cuts of meat. But back then, they knew that all the flavor was in those fatty cuts of meat. That was the very best cuts of meat that there were. So this is what Isaiah says that God was preparing to serve. An aged wine. I had to do a little research about aged wine. I don't know that much of it. I don't have a palate that can tell the difference between a three-buck chuck or a bottle that somebody paid too much for. But there are certain wines that are made in a special way that they're actually designed to sit for 5, 10, 20, 25 years and they grow better with taste and fuller with flavor. These are the types of wine, these very expensive wines that God promises that he is serving. The very best of everything he has prepared for us sinners. Now when a, a bride and groom plan out their wedding banquet, they, they really want to impress people, don't they? They, they would like to serve the, the best meal that they or their parents can afford. And there is that desire to impress people. Like we heard at the wedding at Cana, where they said the tradition was that you'd serve the best wine first and the cheaper wine later on. But that desire to, to give the best meal that's possible is offset a little bit in that wedding celebration by all of the other expenses and cares that the wedding couple has to take care of on that special day. If they blow all their money on giving you the best meal that they could possibly afford, well then, what money is left for the dress and the DJ and, and the, the hall and, and the honeymoon, all these other things that they're going to be paying for. But our Heavenly Father spares no expense when it comes to the meal that he has prepared for you, the banquet that he is inviting you and all people to come and enjoy. It cost him dearly to be able to serve you this meal, the greatest price that was ever paid. He has prepared for us the very best food, the choicest meats and the finest wine. Now don't get me wrong, I love a potluck and I love the meals that we have together. But this is not a potluck that God is inviting you to. He's not inviting you to bring the best that you have prepared. Everything is completed for you. He has completely won and finished your salvation. God has prepared the best foods for us and he simply invites us to come and enjoy what he has made ready for us. We get to enjoy the finest foods that our Heavenly Father has to offer Whenever we eat from the bread of life, God's word is sweet to the taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth, the psalm writer writes in Psalm 119. God serves up a rich banquet of his grace every time we hear or read his word, when we remember our baptism and confess our sins and receive his forgiveness or receive his body and blood that he gives us in his holy sacrament. Whenever we hear the good news of the gospel, our souls are fed and strengthened on this rich food. And through God's grace, he gives to us then the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and our salvation. What a shame it is that we don't consider these gifts of God the finest of foods and the richest of fares, the finest age wine that there is to offer. I mean, how much would it disturb the bride and groom if you were at their wedding banquet and all you could talk about was how excited you were for the kickoff or the first pitch to be thrown out later on that day? 
Now, you folks are here to, today in God's house. You're here to hear God's word and to receive these rich blessings that he has to offer for you. So you're not among that group that has said, I don't want to come. I don't want to receive God's blessings. But in your heart, isn't it true that many times there are places that you'd rather be, other things that you'd rather be doing than receiving these finest and richest blessings from our Heavenly Father? God assures us with this invitation to the feast that he has prepared for us that there is nothing better for you to enjoy, nothing that will more feed your soul and strengthen your faith for eternal life and daily godly living than the choicest food that he has prepared for you in his word. Each time we hear the gospel of God's grace It's like a mini experience of that great day of his coming at the end of time. He comes to us here in his word and sacrament. And as he does so, he slays that old Adam, that sinful nature that lives in us with its evil deeds and desires and he puts them all to death. And he raises us up again, strengthening that new man in us through the means of grace that he gives to us right here and every time you open God's word on your own at home and lead your family in devotions. He lifts us up to a new life to live for him as he will do for us physically on the last day in front of everyone when he comes again in glory. In verse 7 of our text, he promises to destroy that shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. What is it? that covers all nations and and covers all people? What is it that we we long and desire for it to be taken away? Well, verse 8 tells us exactly what God was talking about. He will swallow up death forever. Usually death is the one doing all the swallowing and the destroying and the tearing apart. Because everyone on this earth has sinned, everyone, without exception, dies. Even those people who live such good lives that maybe you wondered about this family member or neighbor. Maybe you wondered. Maybe they never have sinned. I've never seen them sin. I've never seen them do anything wrong. I've never heard them say anything that would be sinful. But then, then one day they die and their shame is revealed that they were sinners all along. Death shows that every single one of us is a sinner. It's the wage that we earn from our sin. And when death or great sadness comes knocking, throughout history, people have shown their great sadness by by covering their faces. Not that long ago, maybe at a, a funeral, you might see a widow wearing a veil to cover her face, and to to show her grief and her sadness at the death of her husband. I picture that those images of of Jackie Kennedy walking down Pennsylvania Avenue with her husband's coffin and that, that black veil covering her face. Often, along with sadness that comes with sin and death, are those tears that God promises he will wipe away from our eyes. He promises that one day, when he returns, all of those tears, the veil that covers our face, the veil that comes along with grief and death, it will all be gone, it will all be taken away, it will all be eaten up by his glory on that day. And each time Christ comes to us in the gospel, we get just a little bit of a taste of what that day will be like when our sin and death is gone for good. This passage from Isaiah is quoted by the Apostle Paul in the New Testament as he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, a passage that we often hear around Easter time. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death has been taken away. Its power over us has been removed because it could not hold Christ. He showed that he had the power over death when he rose from the dead. Death could not hold him because he was innocent, he was perfect, and he was the Son of God. Because he lives, we also will live. But God has a little bit of preparation that he needs to make with us yet. Yes, we've been washed. Our sins have been washed away in the waters of baptism. We've been declared just and righteous in his sight. 
but yet we have these mortal bodies that cannot stand in our Lord's presence for all eternity. So in 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul tells us that those bodies, those, those perishable bodies will be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, we will have new bodies that can stand before our Lord and death and everything that infected these mortal bodies of ours will be gone and lost and forgotten forever and we will have glorified bodies and made to be like our Lord and Savior Jesus to live in his presence and his joy and celebrate his banquet for all eternity. Christ comes to remove our disgrace, to remove our pain, the tears from all the earth. He came once to defeat death by dying for us on the cross and rising again from the grave. And he will come again on the last day to finally do away with death and its disgrace forever. And that day will usher in for us the greatest celebration of all time. The sovereign Lord himself will wipe away the tears from all faces, and we will join God's people from all nations around the world, from all times, to praise our Lord. And surely we will say these words and sing them to our, our heart's content. Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice in his salvation, and rejoice we will, and celebrate in his presence for all eternity. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God which transcends all human understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching today's message from St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Stoddard. Join us for worship at the following times, like us on Facebook, or visit our website for audio and video sermons or to find out more about our congregation. God bless your week in the Lord.